It has been well over a year since Syria's uprising began, but unlike with Egypt, Tunisia, or even Libya, there is no clear end game. My next guest is the expert to talk about this. Fawaz Gerges has been in and out of Syria three times in the last year, and he says it looks and feels like a civil war. Fawaz is a professor at the London School of Economics, and he has a new book out, Obama and the Middle East, The End of America's Moment. He joins me from Paris. Welcome, Fawaz. Thank you, Farid. Fawaz, what do you make of this uh, most recent brutal massacre? Does it tell us something about uh, the, the regime? It, it feels like this is an attempt to really rule by a, a kind of terrible, brutal example. What well, they're sending a signal throughout Syria is, uh, if any place tries something like this, you will be mowed down. I, I fear, Farid, that Hula, the Hula massacre, will not be the first and the last massacre. As you said, this is using fear as a tactics to terrorize the opposition and the population. Uh, my fear is that, uh, in fact, the rot has set in. The significance of the slaughter in Hula is that it increases sectarian tensions between the minority-led government, uh, Alawite minority, President Assad, and the uh, Sunni-dominated uh, majority. What we are witnessing now, Farid, is that the Syrian crisis, which was essentially a political crisis, basically has turned into a protracted armed conflict. Chaos has spread all over Syria. The government, the Syrian government, no longer has a monopoly on the use of force. It no longer patrols many areas of Syria. Uh, and I believe that the writing is on the wall. We're going to see more and more violence in the next few weeks and next few months. My fear is that the armed, the protracted armed conflict could easily plunge Syria into all-out sectarian strife. This is the nightmare scenario in Syria. Now, for us, for a year, while many people w believed and predicted that the Assad regime would fall quickly, you argued the opposite. You said that the regime did not seem likely to fall for a variety of reasons. You said that there were no defections among the, uh, the military uh, uh, apparatus. Do you think that with, with this new situation, the regime can hold on? There are so many unknown variables. I mean, the first unknown variable is the basically costs of the sanctions that have been imposed on Syria in the last uh, year or so. As you know, America is waging a war by other means, an economic war, a psychological war. Can Syria survive another harsh winter in terms of Syrians need gas, cooking oil, uh, food? Uh, secondly, we don't know what's happening within the security apparatus, the extent of tensions between the military and the security apparatus. But the reality is the security forces in Syria have proved to be much more resilient than many observers and many Western governments have believed. That the, the Syrian government, the Assad regime, despite everything that you have heard, retains a critical base of support. You have many Syrians, millions of Syrians still support this particular regime. And more importantly, Farid, the Syrian crisis has been caught in a fierce regional struggle between the Iranian camp on the one hand and the Saudi camp on the other hand. Syria is receiving tremendous support from both Iraq, America's ally, and Iran as well. Not to mention that the Security Council, resolution, the Security Council has been neutralized by a double uh, uh, Russian and Chinese veto. So internally, regionally, and internationally, it seems to me that this is a highly complex and protracted conflict. And no, far from being his days, I mean, numbered, I think Assad will be with us for a while, for you, unfortunately, for the Syrian people. Can I get you to expand on one thing you said there, Fawaz? You, you mentioned that this has turned into a sectarian regional struggle uh, with the, the Saudi Arabia funding what is becoming essentially a Sunni insurgency against the Assad regime. Assad being an Alawite, which is essentially a Shiite regime, supported by Iran, but also by Iraq. So our ally, the Iraqi government, Prime Minister Maliki, is supporting the Syrian regime. Is that correct? It's absolutely correct. In fact, I would argue that the Tehran-Baghdad road has become the lifeline of the Assad regime. Uh, Syria is receiving tremendous support, material support, political support, uh, uh, even uh, military support. Uh, and Iraq sees itself as basically part of the alliance against the so-called the Turkish, uh, Saudi, Sunni-dominated uh, alliance. But my fear is that what the Hula massacre has done, it has poured gasoline on a raging fire. 
and my fear is that the essentially political conflict in Syria could easily expand into a sectarian strife, destroying not only Syria, but also neighboring countries like Lebanon and Jordan and spilling over into Iraq as well. Uh, Fawaz, what do you think the United States should do? Do you think, do you know that there are people advocating military intervention? Mitt Romney is now saying the president should take a firmer stand, whatever that means. What do you think we should do? Well, Farid, it's extremely difficult to watch the massacres like Hola Massacre and remain to be neutral. I really feel sometimes uh, being uh, uh, morally complicit in saying that military intervention in Syria will most likely exacerbate an already dangerous situation. In fact, I would argue that military intervention in Syria will likely plunge Syria faster into all-out sectarian strife. Not to mention the fact that regional powers will come in, Hezbollah and Iran, this will turn into a region-wide conflict. And there is no Security Council resolution to intervene in Syria. I think the Obama administration is doing the right thing, that is trying to economically strangle the Assad regime. The only point here is that we know from the history of sanctions, uh, to what extent have the sanctions exacted a heavy toll on the Assad regime? How long can the Assad regime basically uh, maintain uh, its posture, given the fact it's receiving support from its regional allies, Iran and Iraq, and also trade with Lebanon and Jordan and Turkey? So the reality is all options are bad for it. The menu of choices is very limited. I don't think the Obama administration has the luxury to basically decide, entertain military intervention in Syria. This is really quite what I call the nuclear option for the United States and Syria and its neighbors as well. Kawas Gogas, pleasure to have you on. We will talk to you again soon. We dropped the ball in America, frankly. Uh, we haven't been strategic. We have not been working nearly as uh, uh, relentlessly to address our issues and weaknesses as so many other countries. And I can tell you story after story about that.